So far this year, I've been able to fill in two journals, both high quality with 160 GSM paper, which has allowed me the freedom to do whatever I wanted in it really. From painting with watercolors, doing gouache, pop-up art, collaging, sketching, <laughs> playing with stickers and washi tapes, and so much more. It was fun and exciting to explore different mediums and my journaling style, but I think I'm ready for something a little bit different. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. This is the Muji Notebook A5 size that I have mentioned in previous videos. It has cream colored paper, which you know I love and uses a line grid instead of a dot grid design. The lines though are fairly light and not at all intrusive, so I don't foresee this being a problem. In fact, I'm pretty excited to use this notebook. I've been finding myself getting a little bogged down with all the options that I could do with the Hiraya and Alan journal. More concerned about how my bullet journal looked and getting crafty rather than focusing on the practice of mindfulness and self-awareness of the bullet journal method. For the next few months, I am looking forward to sticking to just pen and ink, simplifying my spreads and making my system work for me again. Here, I am showing you guys some of the stickers that I will be using to decorate the cover of this notebook and some washi tapes that I had on hand. The dark gray color of this notebook really gave me a dark academia vibe, so I did this collage based on that aesthetic. Let me know down in the comments if I did it justice. The first page of a journal usually is a lot of pressure because you want to make it look nice. My peg for this was originally something very elegant, very simple, to go with that dark academia vibe that I was talking about. I don't know what it was about this day, maybe it was the grid spacing of this new notebook or because I only had 3 hours of sleep the night before but I kept messing up the spacing. Finally, I just said, screw it, let's just <laughs> go for a hand-lettered script font instead, and it turned out pretty okay. The font doesn't really matter, it's the quote that matters, right? I got this quote from a motivational YouTube video, so I'm not really sure who said it, but the channel name is called Team Fearless. I'll link the video down below, it's really good. It says, work like crazy in silence and let success be your noise. Ah, I love it. <laughs> so often I find myself guilty of boasting about my accomplishments and showing off the progress of whatever project I'm working on that it distracts me from actually making quality work. Speaking of, I was actually able to do something this month. Can you guess what they are? No, they're not stickers. They're notepads. Ooh. If you follow me on Instagram, these notepads are probably not a surprise to you. I made the mistake of publishing the reel too early. That was just half done, but people seem to like it and I can probably just make a part two for it. So no big deal. At the bottom of the page, I am writing some of my words of the year. Coming into July, my word has changed from walking in faith to more specifically wealth building because really finances are goals that I'm focused on this year. And if you watched my previous video, you would know that there are certain mantras that I am trying to live by and this is one of them that I kind of came up with off screen, which says always move forward, never backwards. This is just a succinct way of reminding me to never give up on anything that I started this year. 
keeping things fresh, I decided to forego any of my goal spread, future log, or index. Instead, I wanted to celebrate this with revising my current me, future me spread, something that I have been teasing you guys with for months now. So if you guys want to do this exercise with me, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Then flipping over, we have the July overview. For this spread, I chose to use my basic monthly set, which you can get for free on my Gumroad linked below. Then pulled out some of the washi stickers that I made for my olive green bundle to decorate the top portion of this spread. I know that a lot of bullet journalers prefer the calendar layout for their monthly overview, but I would highly encourage you guys, especially if you're just beginning to use the vertical calendar layout, to a lot more space to journal and write a summary of your day compared to the calendar layout, which encourages more of planning out just your events and tasks. On the right hand page, I am putting in my self-care habits which put me in a good mood every time I do them. Some of these are taking my daily walks, doing skincare, flossing my teeth, and sleeping early. My aim is not necessarily to do all these habits every day. I feel like putting that pressure on ourselves is not exactly healthy. Instead, I use this tracker as more of a when did I last? So for example, when did I last do my skincare routine or floss my teeth? This gentle reminder approach is more effective for me rather than having a strict regime of things to do every day. Next is my goals tracker spread. So I feel like I got the system for the first page pat down. I wouldn't change a thing, but usually the second page of the spread is not utilized very effectively. So for July, I thought perhaps what I could do is have kind of an agenda for the day page on the right hand of the spread then on the left hand page that's where I will put in the actual progress that I've made for the day to compare like what I wanted to get done for the day versus what I actually got done for the day as a freelance artist some days no job is incoming and that's the days when i work on my personal projects and this youtube channel but other days there would be sudden incoming jobs that are due the next day <laughs> and yeah it's pretty hectic my schedule so i'm still getting a handle of things and this just helps me keep track of all the projects that i'm trying to progress for this year here I am penning in the projects that I am working on. So they're just symbols like YT for YouTube, B for books, F for family, um, E for Etsy, and all that good stuff. Flipping over, we have what I call my ideal day spread. If you've been following me for a while now, you would know that this is entirely inspired by Hey Planner Girl. I used to do it on a weekly basis. I loved it so much that I decided to try it as a monthly spread and it worked really well. Here I am writing down the header for this page using this calligraphy pen I found in Shopee. All the supplies will be linked below. Then I write down the vertical calendar and the hours of the day at the top. Below that are signifiers on the activities of how I want my day to look like. For example, mornings will be reserved for exercise and alone time. Afternoons would be focus mode, work mode. Then by 12, ideally, I would be asleep so I can wake up early and energized. 
Then on the left hand page is the section where I asked this question. Was I able to stick to my routine? Why or why not? This simple reflective journaling prompt really helps me identify the reasons why I am unable to stick to the schedule I've set out for myself. Sometimes it's that I have bad habits like drinking too much coffee. But sometimes it's just unreasonable expectations from myself. Or having a flaw in my system like needing a more flexible schedule. So yeah, remember that this is just a process. So next time if you you find that you're being too hard on yourself, make sure that you're looking at every angle because sometimes the flaw isn't really in you but rather it's in the system or really just the circumstances. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about this spread. Um, so this is the final final spread of our monthly. Um, and this was inspired by this book I read called The Slight Edge, which advises you to write down three things that you're grateful for every day. I tried this spread once before back in February. And I said that it didn't work out, but I was willing to try again. So here I am. I split the page into two columns, which leaves me limited space to write down items that I'm grateful for. I think one of the reasons why this gratitude log didn't work for me in the past was because I felt a certain type of pressure to write long and flowery um, words to summarize things I'm grateful for. As someone who's very direct and straightforward, um, getting in touch with your feelings is kind of a struggle for me. So hopefully having this layout that encourages more bullet pointed way of writing would be helpful to take off that pressure. And going on that train of thought, I am pretty excited to use this notebook which limits my mediums to just use pen and ink. Focusing more on the functional practice of bullet journal rather than the creative side of things. Again, if you want to do the current me, future me exercise, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Like this video because it really does help support the channel. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!